Hello everyone, my name's Tom, and this week I'm happy to report that instead of fixing old, broken, rusty parts, we're actually going to do some meaningful upgrades to the suspension. So please stay tuned, this one should be good. Garage time! Porsches have been known to use torsion bar suspension for a long time, and this hole is where you access the torsion bar, so the spring is essentially a twisting bar that pivots around that hole or that location in the body where the, the torsion tube goes behind the, uh, the hole there. That's where the spring is located and then the wheel is a good foot and a half away from that. The coilover is a different approach. This bar right here is a uh, temporary shock and that's a solid shock so I can control the ride height and you can see how the attachment point is down there very close to the wheel. That's where the shock absorber is in a stock Porsche. Um, way underneath there, all the way towards like underneath the back seat, that's where the torsion bar is. And that's what acts as the spring. So it's a, it's a rod that twists as the wheel goes up, that rod twists more. And the difference is that the distance between sort of the wheel and that torsion bar is pretty large. So the advantage of coilover is that you, you have the spring and the dampening all in a small package going right from the car right to the wheel. So that reduces uh, friction in all the suspension pivots. You know, the suspension pivots are, are back there near the torsion bar. So under high loading, especially with high spring rates or high torsion bar rates, that friction become, can become pretty significant, even if you use you know, at some of the aftermarket uh, bearings and so forth. I do know that coilovers have a lot more adjustability, has the advantage of that uh, force acting real close to the tire, and uh, has uh, options of progressive spring rates, high spring rates. You can use adjustable dampers, all that kind of stuff, all in a small package. It's also much easier to change the ride height. So there, it has its disadvantages here in the rear. The disadvantage of coilovers is that the structure of a stock Porsche really isn't designed to handle the loads in a totally different place. So as I mentioned, the stock design has all the loads happening under the back seats, and in a coilover design, all of the suspension loads and spring loads are acting on these shock towers. So they need to be reinforced, and that's what I'm gonna be doing today. With coilovers, this area needs to be strengthened because it's really designed for shocks, which do carry some load into the top, mostly under, um, either cornering or going over bumps, but the loads are much, much higher with coilovers because all the weight is supported on this. So what has to happen is this needs to be kind of re-engineered and strengthened. And when it fails, it typically fails or cracks right here in this corner or on the top of this section right here. So this needs to be um, you know, strengthened to one, prevent the flex, and two, prevent future cracking. So I want, I want the part to come here over the top to help hold this top back on. I'm gonna be welding along the top, but I also want to um, uh, have this piece come over the top, and then I, want, I also want it to tie into this wall right here. But this, before it gets tied in, it's gonna get strengthened with another piece. First, I'm gonna put this piece down, and it's gonna roll up along the edge and get welded around, and then this piece will, uh, will, will come on top, and I can weld it from the front, and then it's gonna, fold over and come down, then I'll weld it again. So it's gonna be a, a hollow structure here on the top. And uh, this is gonna be bolstered all the way back behind here too. So these aren't the final templates, I'm just working it out. There's more to it than just this. There's gonna be some plates that come along the front. So it's gonna, um, this will fold over to follow the shape. And then there'll be another plate across here. And the other thing about putting this right here too is that I may tie the, uh, the roll bar uh, through this parcel shelf uh, back to this area, which is the strongest part of the car, or one of the strongest parts of the car. Okay, it's time for more paint stripper. Yeah.
Okay, this piece is fitting just about where I want it. It's up tight against this um, inner, fender, inner fender well. Comes along here, I'm gonna weld all the way around the perimeter. And then as it gets to the front, as it comes around this corner, it's just gonna get hammered down and welded tight against this existing sheet metal. You can also see how this top is welded on. It's welded on with um, a couple spot welds all the way around. So this is also gonna get seam welded as much as I can get access to, probably, you know, 75% of it. That was some weld through primer I just shot on there and uh, that's going to give it a little bit of protection. Okay, the majority of this is, is welded on. I, uh, I did switch to the MIG welder just because of the uh, speed and the different uh, sheet metal thicknesses. Now I strategically left um, one of the holes right here. Um, this is a plug weld I didn't fill up and then there's another one on the top um, corner there. And my plan is to basically um, you know, pour penetrating oil down inside there. Okay, here's a little bit more of the game plan. I have um, additional steel coming in here. It's gonna um, tie into this weld and I'll grind it down so it looks like all one piece. It would have been, a, it would have been nice to make it out of one piece, but way too complex uh, shapes here. Would have taken forever. And then I'm gonna weld down here and then weld all the way around the corner. So this, this really stiffens this uh, area here, which is prone to cracking. So I, I think I'm good on that. Okay, these pieces look really small, and um, they are, but I, I think it's gonna really increase the strength of this corner. Um, corners are where the stresses are the highest. This one is the shape of the uh, Porsche crest. It's like a cartoon-shaped uh, Porsche crest, which is cool. I hope the uh, Porsche gods like it. Everything's welded in um, on those new triangular pieces to kind of round out this corner and, and really strengthen the corner. Um, and then the welds that go all the way up along the top, um, right where that top hole is, it is there's some weld missing there because I need to um, get to the uh, other side of the inner fender and kind of hammer it, get it flat. So what's happened is there's a, there's a gap that's opened up here. Um, it's probably Maybe it's a sixteenth of an inch or so right here. It's important that the car is sitting on its four tires and not twisted or jacked up on one side because that would take whatever flex the chassis has and then weld it in place and that can, that can cause it to be distorted. Okay, now I'm down here underneath the fender well and uh, this is the area that was affected by welding on the other side. So you can see the welds are you know, penetrating through and it doesn't really look like the metal's distorted, but I do need to um, squeeze those two pieces together before I can weld them. Okay, that corner went pretty well. I got it uh, clinched up tight and it's welded um, just around the corner like I wanted. Up here, I did a little bit of, a little bit of scraping. There's some undercoating that was flaking off and uh, this is gonna need more attention, but because I was just sitting here looking at the, waiting for the welds to cool, I scraped some of this off. I'm gonna have to come back and, and clean this up to bare metal and then uh, do some epoxy primer here in the corner.
So the idea is to weld, you know, all along this side and then um, add a piece to go down in front and then weld that on the front. So that's why I'm making this in two pieces. This piece is now ready to be welded in, but uh, now I'm thinking, wouldn't it be cool if uh, there was some speed holes in here? So I might do like, um, you know, one, two, three holes in there. And then um, I don't have dimple dies, but I'm gonna practice doing some dimples on this. And this is purely just for style points. I mean, nobody, nobody needs speed holes, but this part is visible in the engine bay. So maybe I'll, I'll, take, I'll take a whack at it. I've been having a good time uh, practicing some of these uh, dimple tools. And um, so there's, you can see, maybe the best one is, is this one right here. I don't know if you can see that, but it's, it is dimpled. Um, I'm not sure this is gonna be the right size. It might be too large, but uh, I think you'll like this. I'm gonna show you how, how I did it. I told you last week I didn't, uh, I didn't golf, and it's true. You can tell by this pink golf ball. Um, it's my wife's ball. So she'll be happy to know I'm using it to create dimples in metal. So check it out. I started with drilling a hole in this piece of, well, this is not actually wood. This is a high, super high density kind of polyethylene um, foam, but it's very, it's very stiff. It's kind of the equivalent of hardwood. So I drilled, first I drilled a one inch hole. I thought that was too big. Drilled a three quarter inch hole. And then I just used my router to uh, create a, um, a rounded shape on top. So I hope you can see that it has a, uh, a dimple to it or a, like a funnel to it. And then the pink ball just sits right in there. What I found that's important from practicing on these is that you have to have the hole directly lined up with the, uh, the funnel. So I put, I have a socket that just happens to uh, fit in the hole. And then this is pretty tight, but it, it does fit. I'm probably gonna have to open that up just a little bit. And then I mark on the metal and on the, the wood its position so that as I take the socket out, I have some reference. So being careful not to lose the alignment we put it in the press. Making sure that the lines are still there. Put the golf ball in. And I'm not using a huge amount of force. Um, I don't even have the handle on the jack, but you can see the ball is kind of stretching. And there we go. This is the one I just formed. And here's another view of that, that tool. The ball here is in, this is the larger hole. I thought that one was too big, so I tried the smaller one. And you can see how far the ball doesn't even go that far into it. And then this is just a flat surface where it just squish, squishes it down. So the question now becomes, are these holes the right size for this part? And I don't want to weaken it too much. I think it's plenty strong enough. Um, and I might leave, this is the backside. I might leave the backside solid and then just put the holes in the front. That way there, I think it's a good compromise between strength and uh, appearance. Um, now this is a little bit thicker. This is a little thinner. So I'm going to try this again using the thicker gauge sheet metal, identical to what this is, and make sure that the ball can uh, handle it. Thank you. 
So it, it did put a dimple in, but it's pretty soft. Um, it's, uh, it's not quite the same crispness as it was before. So my thought is um, I might need to go with a, uh, something better than a golf ball. But the good news is the ball is fine. They're not even squished. So these things can handle a lot of power. For the heavier gauge material, the, uh, the girly golf ball just wasn't cutting it. So I went to the store actually, and I got something. Um, I couldn't find a steel ball, but I did find this, this bolt. Bolt, spacer, and then there's a flanged nut right here. And um, I just screw this all together. And then I can screw this down tight. And now I have sort of a domed surface. I did grind off, there was some lettering on here. I did grind that off, but now I have something to uh, push against from the top and something curved on the bottom. So I'm gonna try one more time. Okay, yeah, that, looks, that looks pretty good from, uh, from this side. From this side, it looks a little bit, um, it looks just a little bit soft. So I think I'm gonna, um, I think I'm gonna put a socket on the back side and just sort of hammer it down. I think I'm gonna to try to change, look for a different router bit because this is a radius router bit and it's a round surface, makes the uh, metal look softer. So now that I have a heavy duty uh, ball here or this part of the die, I think I'm gonna to try to go with a uh, chamfered hole and see if I can't get a sharper corner. This is the new kind of squared off hole and this is the new one and it, it is slightly more crisp um, it's not crisp by any means, and, and that's really the difference between high quality tools and low quality tools is how crisp that, you know, kind of outer diameter is. So let's do it. Okay, I'm done practicing. This one is the real part. How speedy is that? So from this view, you can sort of see the, the shape of this thing. It's gonna be kind of a, a rectangle. Okay, I'm making a template now for this side of the shock tower. Yeah, this side of the shock tower is also gonna have a gusset. But I, I, what I'm gonna do is I have it fitting well against the shock tower, but now I'm gonna cut the angle on the, the top and I'm gonna try to match the angle. That's roughly a 22 degree angle. Okay, this may be a little deceiving, but the angle here on this side is the same as the angle on that side. Behind here, this is, uh, this is welded on. Um, this rear plate with the flange on top is, is uh, welded on, it's very strong. Now it's time to put this plate on, but the question is to drill or not to drill? Come on, I had to do it. One of my favorite automotive quotes uh, from way back in the 60s is one of the Porsche engineers said, we just keep drilling holes until we beat Ferrari. Okay, this side is fully welded in now. 
So we'll finish this up next week. Um, please come back and watch. Also next week, we'll move on to another part of the chassis and get ready for some other suspension upgrades. I might do some work here on the back. I might work on the front. I'm not quite sure yet, but there is plenty of uh, strengthening to do for this old hot rod. So take care. We'll see you next week.